morning, friends. It is a great day to be in worship. We are tracking through the book of Exodus, and today's chapter is a pivotal chapter, not just for understanding this book, but for understanding our faith in Jesus. And so lean in today, listen heartily, because God's got something to do and to say in and through this time of worship. Amen? Amen. I want to give you a couple announcements, and then we'll dive right in. First, if you're a guest with us, I'm Pastor Dan. I would love to meet you after the service at the welcome desk. Come back and say hi. You can check us out on all our social media accounts. If you want to give an offering today, I know some of you already did. There's a box out there in the back on the welcome desk. Just drop it in there, or you can give online through our church app. Men in the room, men watching online, today, 5 o'clock, over by the barn, next to the Family Life Center, we're having a barbecue, 5 to 6.30, bring something to share, we'll have meat, but you bring the rest, so come, it's going to be just a laid back time, play games, meet, meet guys, eat good food, get out of the house, it's going to be sunny, come on out, it's going to be a great day. This Wednesday night, um, all are invited, members or not, uh, Pastor Grace and I are going to have an information night on what's happened or happening in the United Methodist Church. Since we last had a gathering, there's been two significant movements that we're just going to share about on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, over in the Family Life Center. So come on out for that if that is of interest to you. And um, I think we're going to play a video. There is something coming up in June that requires all of our prayerful investment and for many of us, our physical investment. So, uh, Ashley, whenever you're ready. Hey, you guys, look at that. That's amazing. Uh-huh. Wow, look over there. Have you guys seen anything as massive as that? Great. Those cliffs are huge. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Well, we're here. Looks like everyone else just got here, too. It's time to look up. There's more to life than what's on your screen. Go off-road on the adventure of a lifetime and experience the greatness of God's love. My God is strong and will never let go of me. Our God is great. Our God is great. He's an awesome God. Bigger than my wildest dreams. Explore colorful canyons of the Southwest from a rock solid faith and discover that God is monumental. Well, I hope you guys are all getting excited. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Jenna Height. I'm the director of Children and Family Ministries here at Grace Church. And I want to invite you to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Um, we're gonna receive kids from all throughout the community. And what I desperately, desperately need um, is people who are willing to just love on the kids and spend time with them. And I know all of us can do that. <laughs> so um, even if you don't feel like you're the best teacher or um, I don't know, the best at leading a craft, whatever it is, what I really, really need is some people who can get down on the kids' levels and just be with them and love them. So if you'd like to sign up, we do have a sign-up sheet out there for you, or you can sign up online um, at our website. If you have any kids in your lives that you think this would really bless them, um, which I believe it will, um, pick up a few of these invitation cards and just hand them out. Um, so yeah, thank you. I'm getting super excited for VBS 2022. Amen. Let's turn our hearts to the one who called us into being, our creator God who loves us. Will you join with me in the call to worship? You'll join in on the bold parts below. Pack nothing. Bring only your determination to serve and your willingness to be. Don't wait for the bread to rise. Take nourishment for the journey. But eat standing. Be ready to move at a moment's note. Do not hesitate to leave your old ways behind. Fear, silence, submission. Only surrender to the need of time. To love justice and walk humbly with you. Begin quickly, before you have time to sink back into old slavery. Set out in the dark. I will send fire to warm and encourage you. 
I will be with you in the fire, and I will be with you together. Come, Yahweh, and be our guide and our encouragement. Amen. Let's stand on our feet, if able, and let's sing, There is Power in the Blood.
may be seated as we let our hearts dive into what it means for Jesus to be the Lamb of God. Jesus, every time I hear that song, I'm overwhelmed by your mercy, by your grace poured out through the blood of your very son. The line today that hit me was, I was so lost, I should have died. We come in today humbled by that, Lord. That is the truth. Without you, it says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. We were so lost, we should have died. But you did not look upon us in our helpless state and say, you're on your own. You sent Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, to carry our sins to the cross. And through his blood, we are forgiven. Through his resurrection, we are healed. You sent us your spirit that we may be renewed and empowered by the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. So we come in victorious today, powerful through your spirit, humbled by your forgiveness. And so when we come in prayer, Jesus, we celebrate. We celebrate the ways you worked in our life this week, the breath in our lungs, the body you gave us, the family and friends around us. Thank you, God. We thank you for Chris Myers, who... He, in his biopsies this week, um, it was found non-cancerous. We thank you, God. We thank you for Don Baldwin, who had knee surgery and is recovering well. Thank you, God. We thank you that through repentance and forgiveness, the mistakes of our week or our months or our years are swallowed up in your death. And in you and in you alone, we have freedom and victory. Thank you, God. For the people in our community and in our world 
that need to know your presence today. Lord, for those in the Ukraine and around the world where there is bloodshed on a whole different level. Come, work through your church globally to be the hands and feet of the Prince of Peace. Lord, I know many in our, in our congregation and their family are, are praying through stuff related to their jobs. Lord, for the employment and the economy around us, Lord, we pray for your hand to be done. We pray for our nation, that you provide wise leadership. We pray for our communities, the same. Lord, we pray for our families, that they may see it as their responsibility, and we may empower them to disciple their children and grandchildren. Father, be present with us today. We've got silent requests. We've got glaring requests. And in this time of silence, we offer them to you. Father, thank you for your presence. We sing because you set us free. We worship because you delighted in us to, enough to send your son to rescue us. May you be pleased with how we continue in our worship, both here and when we leave today. We pray in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, let's stand on our feet and offer God what's called the doxology, just a celebration of God's faithfulness to us. Let's join in voice if we can.
Amen. Amen. That was a beautiful choir. As the choir finds their seats, I want to encourage you to turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to read in just a minute from verse 21. Next week, if you want to get prepared, we're going to try to do two chapters next week. So this week, read chapters 13 and 14. That'll help get you ready for our time together next Sunday. Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. It says, Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go, select lambs for your families, and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood in the basin. None of you shall go outside the door of your house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike down the Egyptians. When he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over that door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you down. You shall observe this right as a perpetual ordinance for you and your children. When you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this observance. And when your children ask you, what do you mean by this observance? You shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord. For he passed over the houses of Israelites in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed down and worshiped. The Israelites went and did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning. I'm Pastor Grace. If I haven't met you, and I have been so excited to share Exodus 12. Exodus 12 is probably one of the most pivotal chapters. It is going to lay out everything for us. It's going to open up our eyes to see how God had always planned to provide and how it is all about God and all about the amazing love he has for us. Now, often I sit there and think, and probably we do too, that how something that happened so long ago, if it's relevant to us today, but it so is, and I love that God even addresses this. In Romans 15, 4, it says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So everything is written so that we may have hope. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that we can have hope in you, that you give us your word that is powerful and it's living and it's active and it's for us today. So, Father, we surrender our hearts and minds right now to just receive what you have for us and that you will just show us, show us yourself. May we realize the great sacrifice, the sacrifice of love that you have for each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're up to this point in, in chapter 12, and there was all these plagues, and now we're to the last plague, which is the death of the firstborn. And like Pastor Dan reminded us last week, we, he said that way back in Exodus 3, he told Pharaoh, look, you don't let my people go, I'm gonna kill your firstborn, because Israel's my firstborn. So this word Passover, that we're going to hear a lot about means to pass over, to spread the wings, to be able to protect and preserve. This was a profession of faith that the Israelites would have to have to align themselves with Yahweh, their Lord, their God. The Israelites were going to have to choose. They were going to have to make a choice between a polytheistic many gods to a monotheistic one single God, the Lord God Almighty. And they were going to have to choose to become the children of God. They had to choose to follow him. And guess what? We are all given a choice. We are all given a choice, and praise the Lord that we are given that choice. If God created us that we just were robots, he would not be receiving the love from us 
He would just be pulling strings. I love how this proves to me how much God loves me, that we get to make a choice, but that he provided the way. There is nothing I have to do other than choose to follow and love him. So we're going to walk through chapter 12. Now, if you remember the plagues that were given about plague four, God ended up protecting the Israelites. The plagues didn't happen to them after the flies. He protected them. This changes because God protected them then. They didn't have to do anything. It's like one of the rabbis said, they had diplomatic immunity. They could go along and they just were protected. That is no longer the case. With this plague, they were going to have to do something. They were going to have to offer a Passover offering. They were going to have to place the blood from this lamb and put it on their doorposts. So two things we're going to learn about God in Exodus 12. We're going to learn that he will execute judgment against rebellion and sin. And that he'll pass over that them that apply the blood. Because he has to bring judgment, but he provides a way for us to avoid that judgment. So we're going to go through all the instructions that he gives in Exodus 12. 1 through 3 says, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be your first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. So a new calendar was beginning. He was birthing a new nation, a new community. Do you see he even addressed it as tell the whole community. This was going to mark the day of their freedom. Exodus 12, 4 says, If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share with one of their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You had determined the amount of the lamb needed in accordance with each person to eat. So they had to choose a big enough lamb for their household. About 10 usually, not more than 20. But then God even is in the details of things, that if you have a smaller family, he provided this. God doesn't overlook even the smallest amount. God is not a number person. He is a people person. And so here God arranges for the smaller families to join their neighbors. So the Passover lamb now we're going to hear is that has to be without blemish and he had to be slain. Exodus 12, 5 through 6. The animals you choose must be year old males without defect and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. So we know it had to be a male and without blemish. And we know that Jesus was a male and he was sinless. He was out blemish. And they took him on the 10th day, the lamb, and they're going to slaughter them on the 14th day. Jesus entered Jerusalem on the 10th day. And he was slaughtered as the Passover lambs were being slaughtered on the 14th day. This is the beginning of the Passover, of our salvation, of what Christ is going to do for us. Now, what's interesting is they had to be taken to the home. And Club 56 talked about the Passover, and that's how we have this door frame here. And we are going to use some. You know, it says we're supposed to have childlike faith, but I think we have great imaginations too because they used um, something to create their own lambs. Now, granted, I didn't put googly eyes on it and everything like they did, but just imagine this lamb. And they were to take this lamb into their homes so they have this sweet, precious lamb, and you know how it is when you end up getting a, like a new puppy or a new dog. I mean, all of a sudden, you just fall so in love with this. I mean, I remember going to the pound, and the dog comes up, lays in my lap, and I'm like, sign the papers, let's go, because they just... So here's this sweet little one-year-old or younger lamb that they bring into their home, and they watch over it and take care of it for four days. This lamb was going to be a sacrifice for them. And can you imagine the children going to their papa and go, Papa, wh why do we have this lamb in our home? And the papa gets to explain, this lamb is going to give their life for us so that we can live. It's going to give its blood, the life blood, so that we don't get what we deserve. And then on top of it, this, this little precious lamb, 
they were going to have to realize that these lamb and goats that they were taking and putting there was an Egyptian god. These, these Israelites were now having to have a lot of faith because they were taking something that the Egyptians saw as a god, and this god would protect them, and they were taking them, and they were going to slaughter them right in the face of the Egyptians. That takes boldness and conviction, but it also takes the ultimate thing, which is trust and faith in Yahweh. How would that apply to us? It applies to us today in the fact that when we take a stand on conviction of truth of his word, when we stand against the culture of today and saying, no, this is what God says, it's having that boldness. And here they were under oppression of these Egyptians, but when God spoke, they obeyed and they stood in face of that. That is putting their whole life now into Yahweh's hands. And then it said at twilight, they were to slaughter the lamb. It's community again. God was always about a community and about a nation. That's why we come together on Sundays as a community to worship him. They were slaughtering all together these lambs. And now the blood of the Passover lamb had to be applied in the correct manner. And God gave that direction. He gave it actually twice in 12.7 and 12.22. He says, Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs and take a bunch of hyssop and dip it into the blood and pour it on the door frames. And none of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. If we parallel this to the New Testament, Romans 3.25 says, God presented him, Jesus, as a sacrifice of atonement through what? Faith in his blood. Once again, it is the blood. And the blood had to be applied. It had to be applied by faith. It's a personal thing that they had to do. The blood was placed on those door frames and the lentil. And as they did it, they brought the lamb out, they had the blood, and they would take the hyssop and they would sprinkle it all the way around their doorposts. This was an act of faith as they did that. And then they would pass through the blood and go into the home. And when they were in the home, God continues in Exodus 12, 8, says, That same night they were to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made with yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left until morning, you must burn it. Keep it whole. The lamb was to stay whole. No broken bread, broken bones that was to stay whole. And as we know, Jesus had no broken bones. It's one body. And today, Jesus wants us whole. And how are we become whole? Through Jesus, through the sacrifice that was made. And they ate this meal. And today, we will be able to meet, eat of the communion meal. That is the remembrance and the future of all that he has given us. This is a powerful moment. You know, when um, we were singing the Lamb of God, I just, it's like at that moment, it's just realizing who he truly is. He's the Lamb. And the reason why, one thing that they had to do in roasting, roasting would keep the Lamb whole, plus it was a quick way to cook this meat. And he told them to have unleavened bread because it was going to be a quick fast. They had to leave in haste. And the bitter herbs represents the bitterness of their slavery that they were now going to be freed from. And it goes on in Exodus 12, 11, This is how you were eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. 
eat it in haste. It's the Lord's Passover. It's the Lord's Passover. It's his Passover. They were eating with expectancy of gaining this freedom. When they had to put their cloaks in their belts so that they could run quickly, they never had their shoes on in the house, but they had their shoes on ready to leave at any moment. The staff that they took with them was an important tool used to walk in the desert. They knew their freedom was coming. And this feast that they were feasting on, they were feasting on in faith. The Passover lamb of God provides protection from the judgment of God. That's the next thing that we learn, and God lays it out, and it's so powerful because we're getting freedom from the judgment of God because we know that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and we know that the wages of sin is death. So judgment is coming. God will judge the living and the dead. And in Exodus 12, 12 through 13 says, On that same night I will pass through Egypt, and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. He is the Lord. And it says, The blood will be a sign for you on the house where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. God made a provision for all to not receive judgment. You had to have the lamb. You had to have the blood. God provided it. And he explained that the blood was a sign. This blood was a sign. It was a sign. A sign that God provided for all people so that judgment wouldn't come on them. But what did they have to do? They had to apply the blood. They had to apply the blood. If they didn't apply the blood, then when God came with the angel of death and he didn't see the blood, there'd be death. But what's powerful to me is that as they entered and they passed through the blood, they were now inside the house and as they were inside the house when God came by the sign was the blood it didn't matter who was in the house it didn't matter he didn't look down and go oh that's Grace oh that's Dan yeah just go on by it didn't matter who was in the house it didn't matter because God had the perfect sacrifice God provided the plan. It didn't matter if those inside were worthy. It didn't matter if they were worthy or not. What mattered is did they apply the blood? Did they apply the blood? It was all God's plan. It was all God's sacrifice. And the Jews applied the blood. So when the death angel and God came by and there was blood, it passed over that house. But how does that apply to us? You know, I love this. We don't use it very often, but this light switch then has these red lights. Because it's the blood of Jesus that makes us holy, makes us righteous. God provided the lamb once again, Jesus, and his blood. But just like the Jews, they had to apply it to their doorposts. It didn't matter. You know, they couldn't go up and go, you know what, but I'm squimish and I don't like blood. I don't think I should do blood. It's just not, ugh. You know, we can't come to God on our terms. We have to come to God on God's terms. And he provided the way. They couldn't go, well, I'm going to write down all the good things I've done. You know, like if, if I was in the Levitical line that, you know, that means I have this pure blood or whatever. It doesn't matter. And if he made all these lists of all the good things they did and they put it on the doorpost on either side and God comes by, That wasn't going to save them. Because it didn't matter. Because no matter how good 
You are, you are born with sin. And we've all sinned, it says. And that's the glory of the gift of salvation. We can all receive it because it's not based on us. So as they applied the blood, what do we have to do? We have to take and we have to apply the blood of Christ to our hearts. We have to apply it to our hearts. We can't just look at it. We just can't hear about it. We just can't go, oh, yeah, I get that. We actually have to take it and apply it to our hearts like they did in faith. And when you apply it, something changes in our life. Because you know, it's interesting, the Israelites had to go pass through the blood and be in their home. Do you know how many times in the New Testament, and I challenge you to go and read it, how many times it talks that we need to be in Christ? When we apply the blood, we are in Christ. But do you remember that they said that they had to eat all of the lamb? We can't just pick and choose Jesus. Just like they couldn't pick only a piece of the lamb because the lamb died and gave his life blood for the family. Jesus died and gave his life blood for his family, for all those who will apply it. You know, it's like me taking this Play-Doh and the black represents my life because there's sin and then thinking that I can just take a piece of Jesus, the white, and mix it in with this black. I can mix in all of this white with this black, and it's never going to be white. Because the greatest gift that Jesus gave us, it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. So when we take all of Jesus, that means this part of me, the black, dies it goes away it has been ah, crucified it died with christ and now instead of us trying to put jesus in because this was my life i grew up i prayed i had confirmation i read the word i taught religious education i was piecemealing jesus but you know what there was still this void in my life because i had never given my whole life to him I'd never given up my whole self and took everything off of my throne and died with him and raised to this new life. Because being with Jesus is me now coming into alignment with him. Me accepting that the blood covered me. I don't have to try to be righteous because his blood makes me righteous. It's being all in and what's interesting to me even more it's like when we apply this blood and what Jesus did for us I think of a bank account and you know let's say we write a whole bunch of checks and we don't have the money it means that then our bank account goes negative we have all this debt so we have all this debt and that's what it is like with our sin. And then Jesus came and he died and shed his life-giving blood for us. And on the cross he said, it is finished. And when he said, it is finished, all of a sudden my bank account was paid in full. But now that the bank account is paid in full, I have a zero balance. But God does something even more because in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, He died for our sins, but then, when he rose from the dead, he clothed us in, awe, in his righteousness. So now we have an infinitely, abundantly, amazing a bank account that is filled with his righteousness, not anything I do. That's powerful to me that... God provided a way, and it had nothing, nothing to do with me. Because we know, above everything, that he will execute judgment. 
but he also will pass over you if you apply the blood of Jesus. He provided the way, and only through him. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And it started in Exodus 12. They were slaves, and they got freedom. We are slaves to sin, and we get freedom. As Pastor Dan said, Easter people are free people. We are free people. So then we know that the Passover meal is to be a memorial supper. It's to be rehearsed by your children. We are to remember this. Exodus 12, 14 says, This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. That's what's supposed to happen. We are to do this over and over. And they do in the Jewish community. And today we get to commemorate through communion because Jesus shared that Passover meal with his disciples. And if we go on through, through the rest of the chapter 12, we know that at midnight, God did strike down the firstborn and the officials of Egypt. And there was wailing that happened. And then the Pharaoh sends for Moses and Aaron. And he says, and the Egyptians urged them to leave the country because they feared that they would all die. And on Exodus 12, 42, it says, On this night, the Lord kept his promise to bring his people out of the land of Egypt. So this night belongs to him, and it must be commemorated every year by all the Israelites from generations to generations. And in Exodus 12, 51, it says, On that very day, the Lord brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt like an army. They were now free. And they weren't free because they felt like it. They were freed because of their obedience to apply the blood. Because God provided the lamb. The great application of Passover for us is Jesus. This sacrifice and our salvation came from the lamb of God, which was Jesus. And Acts 4.12 says, There is no salvation, no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. We as believers get to share in communion because it's finished. Jesus is that Passover lamb that was slain. Do you realize he did that for you? He did that for you. It wasn't based on how you acted, what you said, what you did. Because remember, it didn't matter who was in the house. If there's anything you remember from today, I want you to remember that God loves you so much that he sacrificed for you so that when judgment came, you would be free and he passed over you. Why? Not because he saw all of our righteousness, because he sees the blood of the lamb, Jesus. And that communion is so beautiful because in communion, Jesus sat there and he picked up the bread and he broke it and said this is my body broken for you do you recognize the brokenness of Jesus' body was done even if you were the only one what's amazing to me is that I'd met a pastor, and he came to know Jesus by taking communion. And I reflected on that, and I'm like, and then you put it with Exodus 12. If you don't know Exodus 12 and what God laid out in the New Testament, you can't understand the sacrifice and what Jesus meant. It puts the whole thing together. 
And then we haven't even gotten to the marriage feast uh, that's in Revelation. It's because of what Jesus did for us. And, and then that same night, he took the cup. He took the ma- Messianic cup, the Messiah cup. This is significant. They never took that cup. And he goes, this, this is the blood. This is my blood shed for you for the remissions of sin. This is a new covenant. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But it comes down to choice. You know, they left Egypt. And what's interesting to me, it says, I think it's in verse 28, I have to look it up again, but then they left, the Israelites left, but others left too. Because others recognize that he was God. Do you recognize God? Do you recognize what Jesus did? Or are you just trying to take a piece of him and apply it? You will not have fullness and peace without taking all of him. And it doesn't mean you don't stumble and it doesn't mean that you don't fall because there's many times that all of a sudden, you know, like for example, we drive down the road, somebody cuts us off, We do not have joy. We probably get pretty irritated or upset. And then I have to remind myself once again that God loves the person that just cut me off, but also this feeling of rage now that I'm feeling because they cut me off has been crucified with Christ. It was buried. And sometimes I tell it. Okay, this anger I'm feeling right now, you were crucified, that is my flesh, and I'm going to now move and walk in the Spirit of God. Because why? Because the blood of Christ made me whole. And not only made me whole, I can now walk in his righteousness. And what is his righteousness? He gives me the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Everything's a choice. But the ultimate choice is accepting Jesus. I pray no one leaves here or online without applying the blood of Jesus and steps out in faith, knowing that he comes and makes us whole. And Pastor Dan's going to come up, and we're going to pray over the elements and share in communion. May you remember that when you take this bread, it's his body broken for you. Make it personal, and his blood shed for you. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you provided the Passover lamb for us in Jesus. That you, in Exodus, freed your people from slavery and spared judgment by applying the blood today. We do the same through applying the blood of Jesus. And that you offer us a life of abundance and righteousness in you. Father, help us to recognize our sin. And sometimes our sin is our self-righteousness, that we can do it on our own or that it's something of us. As we take communion today, Help us to yield our hearts and lives to you that it is only, only through you, through the sacrifice of the blood of the lamb. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus, for that gift. Thank you for that gift. And may all of us reach out and receive it unto ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. So the table is open. We have an open table. And the ushers will come forward and release everyone to come. And if you want, you can kneel at the altar and just remember why we do this. Remembering why he came. And we're going to serve the choir first as they will be singing an anthem for us to just spend time with him alone.
spend time remembering when you applied the blood to your life or if today is the day of salvation. But don't miss this opportunity to thank him for the amazing gift of eternal life. I invite the choir to come forward. Invite our servers to come forward. If you would prefer the self-contained packets, they are right outside the door on one of the tables out there as well.
And now let's stand as we sing, I stand amazed at all of what Christ has done. Hey, before Pastor Grace brings a benediction, I want to, um, we have a sad moment, but I need your prayers. Um, many of you don't know Ashley because she's always up there, but two years ago, or she's been on staff for like three years, two years ago when the world shut down, Ashley had to figure out how to take our worship and make it available to you all. And so she became the resident expert in both live streaming and none of that she had done before. And so she and her husband, Matt, they had a baby last August, and they have just felt a calling that Ashley was going to be called to be a mom at home. And so she told us a little while ago, and today's her last day with us. Mm -hmm. I know, Mitch, that's how I feel. I know. I know. And so we're not happy about God's plan for her life, but we, tr <laughs> but, but we trust God's plan for her life. Amen? And so we just wanted to pray a blessing over her today and her, her husband, Matt, or baby McKinley, who I believe is the fourth cutest baby out there <laughs> after my three. And so I just want to ask you, if you just extend a hand, and let's pray for Ashley and just send her off. She's obeying God. Amen? Amen? And so in that, we know blessing and provisions on the other side. So let's pray. Lord, we just bless Ashley. We thank you for the unseen work that she has done so that people who couldn't be here could experience your presence wherever they were.
People have come to Jesus through her ministry. She's designed logos and graphics that have set the tone for the events and the worship services that have led us into your presence. She's offered her gifts to serve your church. And we just say to you, God, thank you. Now would you pour out a double portion of blessing on her and Matt and McKinley okay. that her time spent at home would be a foundational time for their family's future. So Lord, bless her. We send her. We give her back to you in the name of Jesus. And the church says, Amen. Amen. So how marvelous, how wonderful is the love of our Savior. Go forth in that power, knowing that he, the judgment of God has been passed over in your life because you applied the blood of Jesus. Go in victory. Amen.